We'll be demonstrating a lower limb neurological examination. And we're starting out with the first step being general inspection or observation of the patient. So, Lindsay, we're gonna have you stand over here for a sec. Okay, and just face me. Perfect, okay. So starting out, we're just looking for symmetry between the two sides, any visible scars, perhaps some muscle atrophy. We're looking for involuntary movements uh, or even muscle fasciculations or tremors. So you want to observe both sides. And can you turn all the way around for a sec? Front and back, of course. Okay. Good, perfect. Yeah, and you can face me. The next part is a gait analysis, observing the patient walking, basically. So first off, you want to see if the patient's able to stand on their own without the use of their arms to help. So what I want you to do is cross your arms and then just stand. Okay, perfect. And you can relax the arms. So we're just gonna walk over here. And next, I'm just gonna observe your natural gait, your walking. So I want you to walk down the hall. There you go. Good, and as Lindsay's walking and come back, yeah, we're observing, you know, whether there's cross crawl of the arms, speed, symmetry, balance, if there's counter movement between her pelvis and her shoulders. Now, I want you to walk back this time. You're gonna go heel to toe. So basically walking in tandem, okay? So perfect, yeah, and just walk. Now, as Lindsay's doing this, what we're observing for is, is she able to maintain balance? Are her movements smooth? Uh, if someone has difficulty with this, they may have ataxia, for example, and they might broaden their stance, their body might be tilting back and forth, and they'll have difficulty maintaining this position. So if you were to see something like that demonstrated in the heel-to-toe walk, you would assume that there's probably a problem in the cerebellum, in the middle, the midline of it, the vermis, or a difficulty with proprioception, the sense of position of joint space and movement. So. If she were to tilt to one side, you could suspect that there's a lesion on that side. If Lindsay were swaying back and forth and having difficulty on both sides, then there could be a lesion on both sides bilaterally. So it's something to observe. You definitely want to make sure that the patient is able to balance. If not, perhaps stand a little closer to your patient as you observe them in case they do fall or tip over, just to make sure they don't hurt themselves. Continuing with the gait analysis and observation, we're gonna do a heel walk and a toe walk. So starting out, I want you to do the toe walk. So stand up on your toes and then walk. And we're observing here, we're, we're assessing the, the power of plantar flexion here. Good. Perfect. Okay, and now do a heel walk. So this is assessing dorsiflexion. Your ability to maintain it, basically. Good, yeah, it's a little hard to turn, no problem, keep going. Good, perfect. Now we'll assess the patient's ability to maintain their balance through proprioception. So basically their sense of joint positioning. And we're gonna start out with Lindsay standing. You're gonna keep your eyes open for this. First part at least, bring your legs together and then rest your arms just loosely at the side, perfect. You'd want to observe the patient for about 20 seconds. Okay, and what we're looking for is if you're not able to maintain your balance or if there's any sway or anything like that. Okay, now you're gonna close your eyes and in this position, we'll observe the patient for 30 seconds. Now, a positive test would be if Lindsay were to lose her balance, start swaying, maybe step out with a foot, or in severe cases, even fall over. So what you want to do is when you do this test is you want to be relatively close enough in case the patient does fall in a direction, you can stop them, help them from hurting themselves. Okay, you can open your eyes. Next, we'll be assessing the tone of the muscles in the lower extremities. So all I want you to do, Lindsay, is just relax, make your legs floppy, try not to resist, just stay relaxed. So what you want to do is, you know, just get a general feel of how movement is, muscle tone, kind of work it both ways, bring it down, just look, oh yeah, nice and floppy, you know, kind of following it down here, and you want to do both sides, so we're gonna come over here, same idea, just a little bit of motion both ways. Yeah, try to relax the leg there if you can. And just kind of move it back and forth. Good, just here. Okay, and one thing you could also do is just kind of let the knee go, just make it heavy. Just a little bit of the, of the knee bounce here. Okay, good. Now, once you've assessed the tone, you want to check for ankle clonus as well. And if that were positive, it would suggest an upper motor neuron lesion. So what we would do here is just gonna move your ankle in different uh, directions and then a 
a certain point, you'll feel a quick movement, okay? And basically, we're pushing it into dorsiflexion and holding that. Good. Okay, and we do the other side as well. Yeah, just let it go nice and floppy. And just one more time. Good. Okay, and that is basically assessing tone. Now we'll be testing leg strength and we'll be relating each action to specific spinal nerve root levels. Technically, you'd want to do this on both sides, of course, and compare the two sides. For the purpose of the video, we're going to be demonstrating on one side. So starting out, we'll be doing hip flexion, okay? So all I want you to do is keep the leg relatively straight and try to raise it up off the table, okay? As you do that, I'm going to resist. So I'm going to stabilize your pelvis here, so bring the leg up. Okay, I'm going to push down and you resist. Now this is testing the L1, L2 nerve root levels. Good, and relax there, good. Now we're into the opposite motion, so hip extension. I want you to push your, your leg into the table, okay? But first, let me position myself here. I'm gonna place on the back of your leg. Now push down into the table. I'm gonna try to lift your leg up. Now push down, good. Now this is testing L5, S1 levels. Perfect, good. Now we're gonna do adduction. So adduction, bringing the legs in together. So bring the legs apart. Now on this one, all I want you to do is bring your legs in. So I'm going to position my hands here by the knees. Okay, now bring in. There you go. Now this is testing L2 and L3 levels. Good, and relax. Now we're going opposite. So you're going to push the legs outward. So right here, and go. Great. Now this is L4 and L5 levels. Good, and relax. Okay, now we're going to test knee flexion, okay? It's going to bring you into this. All I want you to do is pull your heel in towards your hamstring like that, okay? And I'm going to resist. Ready? Okay, now pull it in. This is testing the S1 level. Good. Now we're doing the opposite. So you're going to try to straighten your leg this way. So this is knee extension. We're testing L3, 4. Okay, and go. Perfect. Good. And relax. Give you a small break for a few seconds there. Okay. Now, what we're going to test is ankle dorsiflexion, okay? So you're going to pull the foot back like that. Don't let me point your foot back down, okay? So hold it up in that position. Okay, I'm going to stabilize. This is testing the L4 level. Good, okay. Now point your foot all the way down, so into plantar flexion. I'm going to try to straighten this by pushing it back. You resist, okay? Mm -hmm. And this is testing S1 and S2 levels. Good. Okay, perfect. Now, what I want you to do is relax the foot. You're going to pull your big toe back. So this is testing the extensor how it's longest, specifically L5. So pull that big toe back. Don't let me bend it forward. Perfect. Good toe extension. Okay, and relax. Now we're going to do ankle inversion. So you're bringing it into, into inversion. I'm going to try to push your foot back out the other way, okay? Now this is testing L4. Ready? Okay, and resist. Good. Okay, and relax. Now we're going to do ankle eversion. Bringing out that way, I'm going to try to push it back in. You resist, okay? This is testing S1 and S2. Actually, mistake, this is L5 S1, to correct myself. There you go. Good, and relax. Perfect. And as I mentioned earlier, we would be testing both sides. Now let's test the lower extremity reflexes. So starting out, we're going to look at the patellar or knee jerk reflex, which is the L3-4 levels. So just let the legs dangle, let them loose. Going to tap here. And as you can see, I'll do it one more time. It's a normal reflex. Moving down to the ankle or Achilles reflex, we're testing L5-S1. Now just let the foot go loose. I'm going to bring it into the dorsiflexion. flexion. Going to tap on the back here. There we go, one more. Perfect. And since we're screening the lower extremity reflexes, one thing to do is the plantar reflex or looking for the Babinski sign. So what that is, is we'll bring this up. Okay, I want you to just relax the foot here. I'm gonna take the sharper end and I'm gonna do an arc-like pattern on the bottom of your foot. A normal response in an adult would be the toes curling down. If we were to see something come up like big toe extension or splaying of the other toes, that's suggestive of an upper motor neuron lesion. In children under two, actually, that is a normal response, but not in adults. So I'm just gonna take this here. It's gonna be a bit ticklish. Perfect, good. So that would be a plantar reflex, 
And what we're looking for is a Babinski sign. And that would be a negative sign. Now we'll be checking the sensory evaluation, starting out with light and sharp touch or a pinprick touch. So I'm gonna be using a cotton swab for light touch. I'm first gonna test it here. Can you feel this? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now the key to this is comparing left and right. As we all know, there is some controversy regarding the dermatomal mapping. But what we want to see during the evaluation is whether the patient feels it right and left and whether that sensation is the same or equal. So starting out, um, actually move your hands just to the side. Yeah, perfect, okay, so ready? Okay, can you feel that? Mm -hmm. And that? Mm -hmm. Is it the same? Yep. Okay, and what about here and here? The same. Good. And here and here? The same. Okay, gonna go to the inside. Here and here? The same. Same, okay. I'm gonna follow it down a bit here and here. Same. Same. Okay. There and there. Same. Same. And if I go here and here. Same. Okay. And here and here. Same. Okay. So now moving on to sharp touch or a pinprick, okay? So I'm just gonna use the sharp edge of the reflex hammer here. Uh, for this one, I'll probably do it just by your collarbone here. Just let me know. Can you feel that? Yeah. Okay. And you can feel the difference. This one's sharp versus, okay. So same idea. I'm going left and right, okay? So here mm -hmm. and here. Same. Same. There and there. Same. Okay. About here and here. Same. Okay. There. There. Same. Same. Okay. Here and here. Same. Okay. What about here and here? Same. And then here and here. Same. And just one more. There and there. Same. Okay, good. And that's a general screening for sensation. Now that we've done the general screening for light and sharp touch, there's one other sense we should test, which is vibration sense. So Lindsay, what I want you to tell me is if you can feel the vibration and when it stops, okay? So, can you feel that? Mm -hmm. And then tell me when it stops. Stopped. Okay. Can you feel that? Yeah. And once again, let me know when it stops. Now. Okay, great. Now we'll be moving on to joint position sense, known as proprioception. So for this one, Lindsay, I'm just gonna demonstrate a few movements so you understand what we're doing. Okay, this is up and that's down, okay? Mm -hmm. So one thing to note here is when you are testing this, you don't wanna be holding the top of the nail or bottom of the toe because that pressure will actually kind of give a hint or guide the patient in terms of which direction you're moving. So you wanna stabilize from the sides of the phalanx and the sides of the lower part of the toe. Okay, now you tell me which direction, okay? Down. Okay. Up. Up. Down. Perfect, good. Now, once again, we would be doing this on both sides. And the last part of the lower extremity neurological examination is a coordination test. So for this one, first off, we're gonna do a heel to shin test. So Lindsay, I'll demonstrate here. I want you to, you're gonna bend your knee, you're gonna bring the leg over, and then run your heel down the length of your shin. Come back, and then back up, and continue that cycle, okay? For a number of times. Okay, ready? Do you get it? So let's go, so bring that up. Perfect, yeah, then keep doing that. So we're looking for general coordination here. Good, just do it maybe a couple more times. Good, and last one. Perfect, okay. Now, same idea on this side. So once again, you're gonna bring the leg up like this, run the shin down the length, uh, sorry, the heel down the length of your shin, and then come back and do it in a nice cycle, okay? Okay, ready? So let's do that again. Good, yeah, and a few more times. So if someone were unable to do this, it could be indicative of like a cerebellar disorder, of the cerebellum, it could be um, weakness in the muscles of the lower leg or even maybe a problem with their sense of proprioception. So that's one thing to monitor for. Good, perfect, good, and relax. And now, last part, another coordination test is the tapping test. So you're going to basically tap my hands with your feet 
and keep going as fast as you can and try to coordinate the movement on both sides. There you go, good. Yeah, tap. There, keep going. Okay, good. Perfect. Okay. Mm. And that concludes the lower extremity examination.